So I wanted to try and make myself a wooden plane, uh, but I don't have an iron for it, so we're going to start with a uh, old Nicholson saw blade here. Uh, pretty good steel, and in order to keep from uh, overheating it when I'm cutting it apart, I use the bandsaw, the uh, porta band, rather than a side grinder. Uh, of course, I had to learn to follow the lines a little bit, I had marked out on it, but you know, everything's a curve, I guess. So anyway, uh, cut out this little chunk, and uh, I, I sanded the edges on the belt sander to get them smoothed up, uh, trying to keep it cool at the same time. This is the block I'm going to use for the body. It is pecan that has spalted rather well, uh, but it's still pretty hard, so I wasn't too worried about that part of it. Uh, but I wanted to, when I glue the pieces, the sides back onto it, I wanted it to all look like one piece but I like the spalted pattern so I'm trying to keep everything lined up that's what the two little black lines across the bottom were there so first I cut my 40 degrees for the uh, uh, iron to sit on and then I cut 30 degrees for the opening uh, front of the opening and left a little gap at the bottom so that when I separate the two to make sure the blade goes through they'll the, all the spalting will still line up I ended up getting the opening too wide, but hey, it's the first one I've made, so give me a little bit of credit here. <laughs> anyway, got everything marked out, transferred the uh, angles to the sides here, and then marked where I wanted the, uh, oh, what do you call it, the little pin that goes across that holds the iron down, uh, that the wedge goes under that holds the iron down. Marked where that was going to be, and then uh, took it over to drill press and drill a 3 8 hole. Now my original intention was to stick a piece up on a lathe and turn the ends of it round and stick it into it, but I got a little ahead of myself and ended up gluing it up before I made the piece and well at that point it was like okay gotta come up with a different way to do it. So here I go and glue it up and about halfway through the glue up I realized that whoops I screwed up. So my solution was not too bad. I had to uh, take another block. I, I started with Bradford pear, forgetting about how brittle it is when it's thin, uh, and it kind of blew out when I was drilling it. You'll see here in the video. Um, I ended up taking another piece of the spalted pecan and drilling through that with a 3 8 bit and making it. It was a block wide enough to fit down in the uh, the opening of the plane. Drilled it and then cut around it and and uh, was going to put a wood dowel through it, ended up putting a metal dowel through, or a metal uh, pin through it. That, that worked better anyway. So here I'm just lining everything up uh, so I can do the glue up here, get the clamps on it. I think I used every small clamp that I had on the thing. Well, probably not all of them, but I used a bunch. You know, wiped up the excess and got on with the uh, drilling the hole through the block that I was talking about there. You'll have to forgive me for being a little late getting this video up. I, I just had uh, oral surgery and was not really feeling like sitting in front of the computer and talking to a microphone for a little while. But it's getting better, so... It didn't hurt now. <laughs> so there's the Bradford Bear, and you watch it just goes kablooey. And that was it. So then I took a piece of uh, small of pecan and drilled it, and then cut it. And just back the block. And this was a couple hours later, after the glue had set up. Fit the block down in there, make sure it would go. And put a little wood dowel through it. Again, I changed my mind on the on the wood dowel here. Before it was all said and done. 
Then I needed to make a wedge to hold the iron. So I kind of drew something out, didn't like it, tried again, you know, but was a little unsure about how to go about measuring this in there to, to get everything to work, so. Uh, but I did get it to work. Uh, I, I ended up cutting it too long at first, and I had to uh, uh, sand it down several times until I had it the right length, because it kept coming completely out the hole at the bottom, uh, usually farther than the iron, so. But I smoothed it up on the belt sander and then when I adjusted it I just came over and sanded off the tip and then reshaped it a little bit and kept going until I had it right. So now I'm going to mark out for the plane body itself what shape I want on it. And I, I kind of took into consideration, you know, how I wanted to be able to hang on to it when I was pushing through a piece of wood or whatnot. And finally came up with something that uh, felt right in my hand, you know. Uh, granted, I couldn't feel it, but I could, you know, curve my hands the direction of the uh, roundovers I was making to make sure it was looking like it felt right. So, a little bit of guesswork. I switched out the bandsaw blade to a quarter inch so I could follow the curves a little easier. Now it was starting to look like a plane. And the inside curves are a little easier to sand on the uh, spindle sander so I flipped it over and did that and then I ended up uh, flipping it back over and using the belt sander also. Uh, this flipping cart that I made is really quite handy. <laughs> it takes just a second to, to switch out sanders. In case y'all have missed it, I did make a video of making the flip cart, so you'll have to look that up. So then it was time to do some of the rounding over, and I decided I'd pre-shape it on the bandsaw. I have the guide a little higher than it needs to be. I'm aware of that. I've got lots of practice on the bandsaw. And then I did the uh, final shaping and sanding with the side grinder sander on low RPM again. For those of you that have not been with me long, I do this quite often with the side grinder and the key to it is having a variable speed side grinder that you can slow down so it doesn't tear up the sanding pads. Even though that pad's rated for 12.5, uh, the, 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 the disc is rated for that but the, 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 sandy, the sandpaper itself would never handle it. And it's handy because you can take it right off and use it as a sanding pad. So. Uh, especially on contours because it's got that foam so it kind of follows the curve. So here we're getting the blade uh, sharpened up. And I've got my uh, digital angle finder set up uh, I guess it's a sliding T bevel but anyway it has a digital readout that tells me the angle and I've got it set for 30 degrees at least I think it was 30 maybe it was 25 I don't know I did this several days ago but anyway got it sharpened up or shaped and then uh, took it over to the buffing wheel uh, I'm not real fond of whetstones I probably should be but I probably get sharper than what I do but the buffing wheel does a really nice job, so. Now when I got done it worked, so I guess it was sharp enough. <laughs> so here I was just kind of doing some test cuts to, to see if I could get it set. 
and uh, realized a few little other problems. Fix those and then I'm going to come on and catch you up to date on the process. So after a bit of trial and error, I think I got it worked out. One thing I had to do was I had to taper the back side of the uh, taper the back end of the of the planer, the iron, uh, so that I could tilt it side to side and adjust it in parallel, and so it'd be parallel to the bottom. Uh, but that was easy enough. I just took the uh, bandsaw, portaband band, and stuck it in a vise and cut each side, and then took it over a belt sander and smoothed it up. And then uh, the little wood block in here uh, busted in half. So I had to epoxy it onto the bolt. Uh, that uh, seems to have solved that problem. So now it's attached to the bolt. So if it breaks, it's still attached to the bolt. Uh, and the bolt pivots, so that's, that works out. Uh, the wedge, when I first made it, I had to shorten it a lot. I've probably already told you that by now. So anyway, so here it goes. I didn't leave the smoothest surface, but I was kind of intention, intending it as a scrub plane, more or less, anyway. So, and that is a little deep. <laughs> Not too shabby, but that's a thick piece, so I've got it set pretty deep. Um, never having had a plane of this type, uh, I can tell you that it's kind of a bitch to set it. So I will have to uh, watch some of the videos that guys have out on how to set these kind. But uh, I, I like it. It's actually not too bad, and I think uh, that uh, the pecan will be hard enough to withstand, even though it's a little bit spalted. Okay, it's a lot spalted. There's some uh, worm damage up in here, but I figure I'm just going to, the, the sawdust that's packed in there, I'm just going to uh, um, super glue it and then uh, go from there. So, let's get a finish on it. So, there I got the super glue in it and uh, uh, put some uh, boiled linseed oil on it. Uh, spalted woods always look good with boiled linseed oil, so that's what I decided to use. And that uh, pecan looks good with it anyway, so it works out. Turns real golden. Uh, didn't get real fancy with the finish. And I did actually look up some of the videos on how to set it, and I have gotten a lot better at that. So uh, my shavings are coming off much thinner. So anyway, there it is. Um, next week, we're going to be doing that uh, joiner's toolbox that I spoke of uh, on the vlog video explaining that I am moving. And I'm thinking after that we're going to try to do the uh, tool post, uh, the, the excuse me, the post drill, or the uh, handsaw restoration. I, I haven't quite decided which of those two, but one of those two should be the one after the after the joiner's toolbox. So see you then. Thanks.